So you um, brought in this idea of hydrogen and pH, and maybe for the average listener, they don't understand how those are connected. Sure. And you know, and you, um, you know, you studied biological medicine and homotoxicology, and you know, this is a big foundational piece of, I would say, European biological medicine, looking at the terrain and looking at optimal Absolutely. pH in the body. So um, please, you know, share more about this idea. Absolutely. So our body functions optimally at a pH of about 7.365 to be exact. There's a slight difference between arterial blood pH and venous blood pH, uh, as well as the pH found in different organs, such as the stomach. It usually has a much lower pH to help digest food. But when there's an infection, a dysfunction, inflammation, when our body is off in any particular way, that pH balance, that matrix, that um, zone is no longer appropriate or optimal for that organ to function appropriately. And so through the use of the magnets, you can restore. So when we eat alkaline foods, alkaline foods, the majority of fruits and vegetables, they have a pH greater than seven, the eight, nine, 10 range. The more raw we eat them, the higher the pH value. And so pH stands for hydrogen potential. It lets us know what the uh, particular hydrogen, not necessarily content, but how our body responds to it is. And so even though we may taste a lime or a lemon, sure, it tastes acidic, but it creates an alkalinizing response from our bodies. So when you have normal neutral pH tap water and you add a lime or a lemon, you squeeze that into it and then you drink it, it will actually have an alkalinizing effect. And so it helps our body to detox. It helps restore pH balance to our overall body as opposed to when we eat highly acidic foods, such as hot dogs and hamburgers and wine, alcohol, cheese, pastries, microwavable foods, uh, preservatives, chocolate, popcorn, black tea, coffee, et cetera, et cetera. All those no-no foods that we've been told for years that we all know about, but unfortunately, you know, choose to eat on the weekends or uh, whenever they will acidify us and they'll drag our body's pH down as opposed to the healthy fruits and vegetables, which will help maintain it higher. So my recommendation for everyone and that obviously my family and I follow is that we eat a 80, 20, um, diet, which 80% alkaline as much as possible fruits, vegetables, salads, um, obviously raw is best. Sometimes we'll steam them, saute them, uh, boil, it depends on what we're having, but you can have 20% slightly alkaline, uh, slightly acidic. So slightly mm -hmm. acidic foods are chicken, fish, turkey, eggs, quinoa, beans, lentils, rice, um, et cetera. So those are okay in about a four to one ratio or 80, 20%. But the no-no foods are the ones that I previously mentioned that, you know, if you have an upset stomach and all of a sudden you're having cheese, you're throwing in pizza, you're having a hamburger. Well, of course, it's going to make your stomach even worse. The best thing that you can do for an upset stomach is have something that's alkalinizing and that will help your body detox, like, you know, lemon water or have Alka-Seltzer, which will alkalinize and raise the pH. Um, mm -hmm. The other things or conditions that will also acidify our body the most are stress, worry, lack of sleep or overworking. If normal work week hours are maybe 40 hours a week, but you're working 60, 70, 80 hours a week, well, of course, that's going to drag you down and rob your body of all of those extra hours of sleep and rest that your body needs to be able to raise and maintain that proper pH. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, unfortunately, even though dairy, whether it's cream, yogurt, um, kefir, milk, pasteurized or raw, organic, uh, you name it, even though the majority are in the 7.0 range, which is ideal where you'd like to be, unfortunately, all dairy products will feed virus, bacteria, fungus, and parasites. 
So once again, if we go back to the gut and our microbiome is off because we have an excess of bad bacteria or too much yeast or uh, certain gastrointestinal viruses or even parasites in our gut in different areas, we have dairy and that's just going to feed all of them and it's going to add fuel to the fire. So if you have a fire raging, whether you add alcohol, wood, paper, plastic, um, gasoline, they're all going to make that fire rage to a different extent. So through the choices in our food and our lifestyle, we can help maintain a certain alkalinity or an alkaline balance to our body. However, if I have a headache right here, um, say it's a sinus headache just over my eyebrow, it's not like I can eat raw broccoli and that broccoli is going to go and it's going to alkalinize my, uh, the area in my prefrontal lobe and get rid of the headache. No. However, if, if I use a magnet and I use the black side of a magnet to push the hydrogen protons out of that area to push away the inflammation, I can place a black magnet on the right side and a left magnet on the left and a red magnet, sorry, on the left side. And the color I'm mentioning is the color that goes towards the skin. Mm -hmm. And this will increase circulation between my prefrontal lobes. And it will also have a drainage effect. So not only will it help pretty immediately drain whatever is kind of causing that headache, but it will also improve the flow of red blood cells in the area. And so how do I determine or how does a therapist that uh, performs a biomagnetism technique know exactly if he places a black here or a red here? Because oftentimes if that doesn't work, then you can try red over the area of inflammation and then a black on the bladder to drain that inflammation down to the bladder so that you can pee it out later. If there's excessive inflammation or if it's a very acute trauma or something happened, you can also use the kidneys to drain that inflammation through. You can also use the uh, inguinal lymph nodes or you can use the liver to drain. And so how are we going to turn all that? Through either autonomic response testing or what we call muscle testing that we work in biomagnetism. You can work either through the feet or the hands. And so with the feet, the majority of us practitioners like to work with shoes. And these are normal, say, work shoes that simply have the fronts cut off so that all different sizes can fit in there. And so we have the person lay down. And so if they're laying down in that direction, their feet are facing up. I have their heels here. And so if you can see the edges are lined up, when I place a magnet over an area of inflammation on the patient, one of their legs will shift and they'll have a muscular contraction. Not sure if you can observe this mm -hmm. change here, but that lets us know that, okay, there is inflammation in that area. Now, where do I place the second magnet? And so until you find the exact specific spot for that second magnet to go, whether it's the liver, the kidney, uh, you name it, it could be anywhere on the body, the leg will not restore back to its normal position. And so only through the muscle testing or kinesiology can you determine where you have to place that second magnet. So once again, once again, just to uh, conclude this topic that I kind of went around a lot, can't stress enough the importance of our nutrition. However, when we've done all that and it still doesn't work, that's when you have to go to some other technique. And so in this technique of biomagnetism, or what I like to call dual placement technique, because it involves the placement of two magnets in pairs, that's when you can restore the leg length of the individual and you know that, okay, here's where the body goes back into its optimal 